So I would like to do what um, you expect when a new generation of technology has just matured, enough to be able to make it meaningful and apply it in many different areas. The platform that I'm going to talk about today is what we call metatranscriptomics, which um, many of you probably already know, but in the context of microbiome, when you can see the activity of the trillions of microbes in your gut and the rest of your body, and you can use that information in very significant ways for detecting phenotypes, whether it is a basic phenotype or a disease phenotype. That's what I would like to illustrate to you today with a ton of data. So we've, we've been around for about three years, but we have collected now uh, as of the end of last year, more than 100,000 people's samples. And by the end of this year, hopefully, we will be close to a million. And that's a ton of data. This is actually the highest, biggest amount of data and metadata that's available in the microbiome space right now. And our premise when we started <clears throat> was that gene expression is the key to chronic illness. As we know, chronic illness is such a big epidemic in the modern world. But when you look at a common disease like IBD or Crohn's, a subtype, you see that it goes into remission and relapse over time. What has changed when it changes from remission to relapse and relapse back to remission? What's changing is your gene expression. Your colon can be healthy one day and a few days later your gene expression has changed. Your DNA has not changed. Your DNA does not change from the time you're born till the time you die. But your gene expression can change dramatically causing the sickness and then of course after a few weeks it can go back to being healthy. Turns out that your basic lifestyle with nutrition and stress and other environmental factors can make a huge difference in helping you manage this kind of chronic disease. So we believe that the only way to revolutionize our healthcare system, especially with respect to chronic disease, which is the biggest problem of the 21st century in our opinion, is to have preventative, personalized, and self-care. So whether you're sick or healthy, we think there should be at-home tests and we are providing several of these at-home tests that can provide very high resolution data that can be run through AI algorithms and can result in nutrition and lifestyle recommendations that once followed should help you maintain a healthy and a long life. So we invented and built a platform for robust RNA sequencing. Not DNA, but RNA. And that's why this is the next generation. I think of this as the third or fourth generation in microbiome data processing. This RNA sequencing platform, which we have published in this paper that you see on the screen, takes a stool sample or a saliva sample or any other sample from your body and isolates the messenger RNA. So we take out the DNA, we take out the ribosomal RNA, and we isolate the messenger RNAs, which are actually the protein coding parts of your genome. And we are now able to generate extremely high resolution. This is actually the highest resolution data that we can find in the market today. Um, at the level of strains, and at the level of functional activity, which is keg orthology, so essentially genes or transcripts that have been clustered into keg orthologs, which are all similar performing genes, similar function genes. So with this data, we have already seen a tremendous amount of signal about everything in your body. So let me just give you some examples of uh, the kinds of data that we see so far. In a stool microbiome, we can currently see approximately 8.2 million transcripts unique ones, and we can see approximately 4,500 strains. In a saliva microbiome, very non-invasive, we can see approximately 300,000 transcripts, and we can see a, around 1,000 taxa. In a blood transcriptome on the host side, again, RNA of the human, 
we can see about 50,000 transcripts. So obviously, you know, there's, uh, there's many different variants of your RNA and, you know, 23 genes, but you have, you know, up to seven variants of your RNA. Therefore, you know, we see about 50,000 of these uh, different unique transcripts. And per sample, we've seen about 14,000 transcripts, which is unprecedented kind of data quality and, and data breadth. So for an AI and a machine learning person like myself, this is uh, a treasure. And very importantly, the question is, what kind of biological signal does this data really contain? And let me prove to you in the next few slides that there is in fact very significant biological signals here. First, we can detect many of your basic phenotypes. We can tell you how old you are, pretty much looking at the microbiomes metatranscriptome or your human transcriptome. We can tell you, of course, you know, what your gender is, biological sex. Very easy to tell, in fact. The, you know, the, the features are pretty significant and, and pretty obvious. We can tell you how you sleep. We can tell you whether you have taken antibiotics recently. As you know, when you take antibiotics, you es essentially decimate your microbiome. And it's very easy to tell when somebody has been on antibiotics. And you can look at the history of a person and you can see how far back they probably took antibiotics. If you've never taken antibiotics, you probably have very rich and diverse flora in your gut. But if you have taken antibiotics, you might have a desert in your, in your gut. We can tell how your bowel movement is, which is kind of obvious for a stool microbiome, right? We can tell, you know, on the, on the spectrum of constipation to diarrhea, where, you know, you have normal bowel movement in the middle, we can tell where you probably fall. We can tell whether you are a vegetarian or a non-vegetarian. Very, very different kind of flora based on the kinds of complex carbohydrates that you consume, which are, in fact, prebiotics for many of these microbes in your microbiome. And there's many others that I'm not going to go into, but suffice it to say that we can probably tell you what your general health category is. You know, if you are a person who has no major symptoms, no major medications, no smoking or excessive drinking, or you're physically and socially active, if you put all of those people with those characteristics in a bucket, we can tell pretty easily by looking at your microbiome whether you belong to that bucket. So this is a significant amount of biological signal. Now, I'm gonna give you four examples of clinical studies that we've done that show that it's not only your normal phenotypes, but your disease phenotypes that we can see very easily, and that can lead to a number of things. The first thing we've done with it is a wellness product, which is available today for about $100, which is unprecedented in the market, and that's why we have the kind of scale we have, and that's why there are so many people trying this out. So we did a study with about 550 people. We gave them food for 14 days and we attached a continuous glucose monitor on the back of their hand, and we took a microbiome, a stool microbiome at the beginning of the trial, and we asked them to track everything they ate over the 14 days. We designed 104 very specific meals that are very much like what you would normally eat across the triangle over there, which has fats and sugars and, um, and, and proteins at the three corners, so we, we made sure that our designed meals cover that space. And you know, for a given individual, you can see in the top two lines over here how the continuous glucose monitor has shown their responses after they get up in the morning. So during, during the night, with the gray bars on the left, their glycemic response is low. But once they get up and they eat a meal, you see it spikes up a little bit, and then it stabilizes again, and they eat another meal, they track what they're eating, and we can tell what the ingredients or the nutrients inside the meal are we can tell how every macronutrient impacts the glycemic response. And we designed some meals that we tried more than once on the same person to see what the variation within a given person is. There are nine meals that I show there that have that property of having been given to, at least, to, to a person at least twice, so we could see what the variations are. And you see the variations are quite dramatic. For something that is very, consider it very healthy because it has a lot of fiber at the bottom, which is, celery and hummus, the variation is low, and the glycemic response is pretty low. For something like a glucose drink, the variation is pretty high, and the glycemic response is pretty high. That's the one at the top, which is the green bar. 
But here's the most interesting part of the study. If you pick two people and feed them the same two foods, you can have opposite reactions. So on the left, you see a person who, whose blood sugar spikes when they eat a banana, but their blood sugar is flat when they eat bread. And on the right, you see a person whose blood sugar spikes when they eat bread and stays flat when they eat a banana. And that's pretty common. You and I can have a very different reaction to the same two foods. And once we picked those observations and we took the 30,000 meals that we collected data for and we built a machine learning model, we ended up seeing the same patterns in the predicted responses. So now our machine learning model can predict for a whole list of foods for a person that we've never seen before, just by looking at their microbiome and some basic information about their biology, we can tell what is your glycemic response likely to be for hundreds of foods. So in this case, we show that two people who eat meal A and meal B, the machine predicted that one person would have a higher glycemic response for meal A and another person would have a higher glycemic response for meal B. And that's, what, that's what the prediction shows. Those are the red and the blue lines that have crossed over between the two yellow lines. Hopefully you can see that. We have the uh, paper, the publication available on BioArchive right now. It's, been, it's going to be peer reviewed soon. But our model predicts glucose response better than the nutritional standard of care, which is just to look at the glycemic index of the food or the look at the carbs in the food or the calories in the food. That is not the whole story. That's only one half of the story, which is what the food has. But you have to combine that with what is your biology, and that's when you get the real answer. That's what our model does. And that puts a very common sort of a nutritional approach pretty much on its head. And if you look at what are the features of our machine learning model that has been shown to be the most important, you see here at the very top, there are several microbiome pathways that we have evaluated that come to the very top. For example, the fucose metabolism pathway activity, which we have computed based on our high resolution microbiome data, that happens to be highly active for people who have a very high glycemic response. And for indolacetate, it sh it's shown here, and actually there's other literature on it, indolacetate is a pathway that when it's active, it reduces your glycemic response. And that's what our model shows as well. And we've discovered several other pathways along these lines. Now, you can take that glycemic response and put that into a normal food recommendation product, which is exactly what we've done. If you buy our product today, that machine learning model that I just showed you is embedded in the product. It, it tells you which foods to eat and which foods to avoid. That's available right now uh, on, as an app. Once you send in your sample, you get the food recommendations directly on your app. So you can take it to a grocery store and so forth. But we've gone well beyond that. Now we can start say, seeing whether a population of diabetics can be predicted. You know, if in this particular case, we took 200 diabetics and 500 controls with a good distribution of age and um, BMI. And we can predict and distinguish between the diabetics and the non-diabetics pretty well using our machine learning model just by using their microbiome data, just by using their stool microbiome. We don't know anything else about them. You can also look at the microbiome activity signature of people with irritable bowel syndrome. And there is a pretty clear signature of the microbiome. So if you, you know, in this case, we took a population of 6,000, almost 700 people, and we looked at the differences between people who have IBS and symptoms and people who don't. And it turns out our machine learning model can do pretty well to distinguish between the two as well. And this last example is the one that I am the most proud of. And that is just by getting a saliva sample, very non-invasive, you just spit into a tube and we process the saliva and get the microbiome of the saliva, we can tell whether you have oral cancer. And this is an unprecedented result. Um, finally, what we've done is once we discover these, si these signatures, we've turned them into personalized food and supplement recommendations. Today, we give it to you digitally. Very soon, we're going to give it to you physically. So it arrives at your home. And you can use that literally on, on a daily basis. 
So we have started defining a different way of looking at the gut microbiome. When your biochemicals that are associated with disease activity is too high, we ask you to avoid the foods that feed those pathways so they get reduced. And when we see that a particular biochemical activity is too low, we ask you to eat more of the substrate so that we can raise those biochemical pathways. And that makes you healthy as well. So we have a number of partners with whom we are doing clinical studies across the entire spectrum of chronic disease. And this is the future, I believe, of how to manage chronic disease. Thank you very much.